All right, we're back in Robocraft, and here's my favorite blocks in the game, the communication blocks. You got your jammers, your radar antenna, and your radar receivers. Just wanted to talk about uh, a few things about each of them. Maybe a little, some misconceptions and some confusions of my own that I don't get how they work. I love that they've put some of the tips in the uh, little loading bar at the bottom of the screen recently, saying that things that like that the radar jammers don't stack. Or was it the radar antenna? Oh, see, I don't know. Um, so if you look at the stats on these, you've got a range figure on your enemy radar, 250 meters. And if you look at your radar receiver, well, apples to apples here, your T5 radar is 260 meters, your T5 receiver, only 70. And when you use these in the game, that's contradictory because the receiver is showing you data all over the map. Basically, the radar receivers receive data from the other uh, player's enemy radar. So even if you don't ever look at your map or you don't have a radar receiver of your own, you should still carry an enemy radar because your teammates are going to benefit from that. And if you've never seen that in action, make sure and buy a T5 radar receiver and try it out. I think after you get used to seeing that information, you'll never never have a robot without one. I mean, if you're like me. If you ever remember to look at your map, which is hard, but uh, being able to see where people are engaging around the map is, is very helpful. But as far as these numbers go, I really don't understand how that works. It's like they're, they're swapped, or like you've got a range of 70 meters. Now, see, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that. Um, and then it, it, I, I don't how, know how far a meter is in the game, but roughly, you know, if it's saying that your range on an, on your T1 enemy radar is 250 meters, that's no no way. It's crazy. Like it's it's way less than your your line of sight on on any of these, even on the T9, which is only supposedly another 20 meters. So whatever that means, the point is, obviously, you're going to use a better tier of this as you level up, no matter what. With the exception probably being uh, the radar receivers, because they're really freaking honking big at T7, and then they're just insane at T9. You see very few people using these, even in Tier 10. Um, they'll usually use a Tier 7. And uh, your typical, and I don't fault people for all doing this the same way, it's a pretty convenient way of mounting those, is just on the back of the vehicle like that. It's obviously vulnerable there, but um, it's not interfering with the guns. And assuming you never get shot from the back, it'll hang out. Um, I've had a lot of fun putting these in the middle of crafts and then trying to build blocks around them and then putting my pilot seat either directly behind it or some distance behind it because uh, really all of these items have a significant amount of armor. Look at the Tier 5s again. You've got 2200 armor on the radar. Tier 5 radar receiver. It's got 1,300. Up here in T9, 6,000. Uh, speaking of that, people tend to use these jammers as armor because they have that high value. Oh, I missed one. Size. That's right. Um, and I think that's fine. Like, you'll see them, imagine that radar is a gun, you'll see them on the sides like this often. And uh, I think that's functional. Especially when you have a bot that doesn't have a ton of blocks in it and you're just throwing CPU away. Because you can see even the T3 jammers use quite a bit of CPU. To use them as, a, as an armor block is, is uh, pretty frivolous. But I, I would give you a tip on that though, if you, if you do do that. Um, use these as armor. Don't put your pilot right on top like that. You know, I'd recommend you use that as a misdirection thing. I've got this. This is how it's set up on my sniper. It's very rarely upside down, but in that woeful scenario. So uh, that jammer is connected to the chassis elsewhere. And so what that means is, it's annoying because we can't see underneath this. If, if you get hit anywhere in that area, Instead of it possibly getting redirected to your pilot cube, it's definitely going to travel down this way. Just a fun little tip. 
uh, when I see these on the bottom of vehicles and I'm playing as a accuracy robot, like a sniper or a railgun, I aim for that. Not worrying about the armor, you know, figuring that there's probably an important block on the other side of it. I mean, ideally you don't want any important block directly connected to another important block in a perfect world. So here's an idea of the different various sizes and some of my own little thoughts about these. Um, let me know if you have any idea about the little stack mysteries about the numbers and everything in here. They, they, I, I, I did get the answer on the enemy radar. They don't stack. It's still a good idea to have more than one radar just because they're, they're pretty easy to get blown off. And it's not an incredibly large amount of CPU. I think it's 15 CPU at tier 5 and 20 at tier 9 and only 10 at tier 1. So uh, if you're a low tier robot, you should have at least one tier 1 uh, enemy radar on your rig. Uh, I don't know if the jammers stack. And the, the number on those is this seemingly meaningless millo megawatt uh, and I think those are only useful to compare one jammer to another so 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 1.1 1 .1. so they just go up in a linear fashion as far as whatever the jamming power is but as far as like what that means I don't really know I've you know I use a jammer just like everybody else but you don't really get to see the effects of whether they can see you on their radar or not I'm guessing that the stronger the, the strength of the jammer, the closer you have to be to the person before their radar picks you up. But again, since all these radars are within the visible spectrum, you're, it's only when people you know just aren't looking or you're behind them out of their line of sight. You know, They should have seen you by the time you get that close. So I don't even know if the jammers are all that useful. It's just something we all kind of run as like a good luck charm. But uh, there's no hard data, and it probably never will be, since uh, the only time you're going to get into a match, other people are trying to kill you, and it's hard to test things. All right. That's everything. We'll see you.